Python has a sorting method and function built in. We're going to cover these, how they work, how you can use them to sort things in the order you desire. First, let's cover the sorted function that's built in. Sorted takes an iterable. This could be a list, a tuple, it could be a generator, any kind of iterable. And you can have an optional key parameter, which is some function. And you could specify whether you want it in reverse order with the Boolean that defaults to false. Sorted is a built-in function. It can sort any kind of iterable, and it always returns a list. By default, sorted will order items in the iterable from smallest to greatest values. So if I were to bring up a Python interactive session and type something like this, sorted with a tuple, uh, let's say one comma three comma two, then it would give me back a list with the elements one, two, and three in sorted order. Note that this uses stable sort. What that means is that if it finds two elements that are of the same, if they're equal to each other in sorted order, it will preserve the order. So as an example, let's try this out. So we're going to sort a tuple with the integer zero and then the floating point zero and then one and negative one. And that should give us, it'll start with the smallest one, which is minus one. Then it will preserve the order. Zero and floating zero, floating point zero compare equally. So it'll give me first a zero and then the floating point zero, and then it will give me the larger number one. Note that sorted will raise a type error if it can't compare the elements to each other. For instance, if you tried this, sorted of let's say one and the letter A as a string, this is gonna raise a type error. And the reason why is because you can't compare, like, is one less than A? It doesn't make any sense in Python. This raises a type error as well. So when you're sorting a, a iterable, those items have to be of a similar enough-ish type. Like, you can compare ints and floats. Uh, you obviously can't sort complex numbers because they don't have any kind of ordering. All right. There are two named parameters, key and reverse, and you have to specify these by name. The reverse parameter allows you to reverse the ordering. So let's say we wanted to sort in reverse. So we say sorted. And let's take that list from above 0 and 0 0.0, 1, and negative 1. And we're going to say reverse is equal to true. In this case, it will give me this, the ordering like this. And minus 1 at the end. So 1, 0, the floating point 0, minus 1. So it preserves the order still. It's still stable but it will start from the greatest values and go to the least values. Okay. Let's say we wanted to sort a list of strings based on their integer value. So we have, let's say we have 100 and then we have 12 and then we have 21 and then finally we have just lowly number one. And we're going to say the key function is in fact the int built in function. And what this should do is give you back a list of the original items, 1, 1, 12, 12, and then 21, and finally 100. And it does it in the order when you apply the int function to those values. So it takes int, applies them to each of these values, and then it sorts those things and gives you back the original value. The Perl programming language has a similar way to do this. It's called a Schwartzian transform. The way the Schwartzian transform works is you first apply the key function and you generate a sequence of pairs where you have the key value and the original value in those pairs. Next, you sort that list and finally you extract the, the original value. In Python, this might look like something like this. So we say map, and we're going to take a lambda of the pair. This is the result of that list. And so we're just going to return the second value, which is the original value. And we're going to apply that to sorted. And then we're going to map again 
This time we're going to take the original value, let's call it a ridge this time, a ridge, and we're going to return a tuple where we have the key function applied to the original value, and then the original value. And then so this, we're going to close off that map, and then we're going to sort that according to that, and then we're going to close off that map. And so what this does is it creates a sequence where we have taken each of the original value. Oh, I have to put the list in there somewhere, don't I? Yeah, let's actually stick that in there. This is the this is the list that we want to sort inside there. So we create a map that returns a list of pairs where the first value is the key applied to the original function and we original value and we keep the original value. Then we sort that and when it sorts a list, it's going to compare the first item with the first item and the second item with the second item. And if the first item is, is less than or greater than, it'll put it in the right order. And then it'll actually use the original value if the two um, if the first values are equal, and then finally extracts the original value. So this isn't this is not stable, and it has some other problems too. But this is how you might do it in Perl, and this is why the key function, the key parameter, is so important in sorted. Okay, in Python 2.7, there was the CMP parameter. Okay, what CMP was is it allow you to pass in two values, compare those two values, and return minus one, zero, or one, depending on whether they compared less than, equal, or greater than. We don't use that anymore. Uh, CMP actually slows down the sorting function a lot because typically you can transform the thing that you want to sort into a list of integers or floats and then sort that. And it's much faster to sort integers and lists directly. Okay. So we've covered sorted. There's also the list.sort method. Oh, it has the same parameters, so we can we can specify the key, and we can specify the reverse by name. Okay, and this will do an in place sort. And to remind yourself of that, it won't return anything, right? So if I said a is a list, let's say it's three, two, one, and then I'm going to say a dot sort. Now a is going to be equal to one comma two comma three, right? It does an in place sort there. The key parameter actually shows up in a couple other places in Python. We can see it in the min and the max functions. These take an iterable and an optional key value. And that key has to be a function. If that key value is if that key is specified then it will apply that to each item in the iterable and then find the minimum or maximum of the result of that function. Return the original value. There's also filter. This takes a function and an iterable. You can think of this function kind of as a key value, a key parameter like in sorted or in min max. The function is applied to each item in the iterable and if the function returns a true value then that item is kept otherwise it's thrown away. Map is a little bit different. If you recall, map takes a function and several iterables, one or more, right? And what it will do is apply that function to each item in the iterable and give you a new sequence based on the result of that function. So map is quite a bit different than, than the key method. Let's go through some examples. These examples are kind of important, uh, some things you should remember. So typically when we sort um, strings, so we might have here and I'll just use sorted, so it's easier to illustrate with sorted. So we're going to take sorted, and we have, let's say, Jack, and then we're going to have uh, Jim. Okay, now you'd expect that Jim would appear after Jack. However, because the capital letters sort lower than lowercase letters, the actual sorted order is going to be uh, Jim, and then followed by Jack. So it's not uncommon that you want to do uh, sorting based on like a case insensitive sort. And so the way to do that is you use uh, the key parameter of casefold. So we're going to say Jack and then Jim. And the key will be string.casefold. str.casefold. And we use casefold instead of lower. So don't use lower because lower doesn't work for all of the Unicode set. Casefold does the right thing for all the Unicode, and that will actually give you back what you expect. You'll get Jack first, and then Jim. Okay. This example is fairly involved. We're going to have a list of people, 
and we'll just have to imagine this. But that's a list or it's a tuple or whatever. And inside each each person is going to be represented by a tuple. Uh, first with their name, it's a string. Then we're going to have their age. Then we're going to have their height. And then finally we're going to have their score. Like we're playing some video game or something like that. And this is just random data. We wouldn't want to actually sort people this way, typically. So because we do stable sort, let's say we wanted to sort by their name and then by the score. So if two people have the same name, we want to have the person with the higher score come first, right? And there's two ways to do this. One way we can do this is we could say that sorted by name and score is equal to sorted. And we start with people. And then we're going to use the key function as follows. So we're going to have their lambda is going to take a name, age, excuse me, height and score. And we're going to return a tuple with their name, but it has to be case folded. And then we're going to follow that by their score. Okay. And so this should sort them. If their name compares the same, then it'll compare by their score. We could also do this taking advantage of stable sort by saying, let's, if we said sorted by score is equal to sorted and we have those people again. And this time the key function is going to be lambda, name, age, height, score, and we're just gonna return their score. Okay, so this is everybody sorted by their score. And then next we're gonna say sorted by name and score is equal to sorted. And we take the sorted by score And then we say the key, again, it's going to be a lambda with name, age, height, and score. We're going to return their name, but case folded. Okay. And so what this will do is it'll sort them by name, but it'll preserve the ordering. So if they two people have the same name, it'll choose the people that appear first in this list. In this case, we've already sorted by their score. So the people who should appear first with the same name are those with the higher scores. Okay. Now this works fine for this case. The case that would be interesting is let's say we wanted to score, uh, sort by their low score. Like this is sorting by low score. We wanted to sort by high score, right? So in this case, what we would do is we would change this to have a reverse equals true. Okay. So now we're sorting first by high score. So the people with the high score appear first rather than the low score. And then we're sorting by their name. So we're going to see the name with people with the high score and the, the score is lower than that and so on and so forth. And we could only do that because we're reversing this sort, but not this sort, right? Now you might think, well, what if we just added uh, a minus sign here? We could just say that it's going to be minus. Okay. And that would, because of the nature of numbers, right? If you apply minus to the number, then you have to flip the, the ordering, right? And that would work too, right? Sometimes though you can't, you want to sort by like name descending or name ascending. Um, name descending rather than name ascending, in which case there is no minus sign for names, right? So you'd have to use a reverse sort on the name. Anyway, that's about all there is to this. Uh, sorting is a fairly powerful feature in Python. Python has a really advanced algorithm to use for sorting. Uh, very useful, very well tested. If you guys have any questions, please contact me in Discord or find me in the comments below. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.